Hi there everybody and welcome to another video. In today's video I have this Mercedes CLK. This is a 2004 W209 model and um, I'm going to be changing the indicator stalk here. So my indicator stalk here it's sort of um, gone potty because when you put it up when you put it to turn right it doesn't stay. It keeps flicking down by itself. If you put it down it actually stays but the app position is not working and uh, I got myself a second hand one from eBay so hopefully it's working um, got the same part as the one I've got in there so that's this is what I need to remove in order to um, change this so to get to that, we need to remove the airbag, the steering wheel here, and uh, the clock spring as well. And that involves obviously the airbag and whatnot. So for that purpose, we are also gonna, I mean, I have to disconnect the battery to avoid any uh, issues with the, uh, with the airbag. We don't want that getting triggered or exploding or anything like that. However, just before I disconnect the battery, we wanna remove, um, Behind the steering here, there are these holes. And in these holes, there are um, tor some Torx screws holding the airbag. Um, and there is two of them, so one on this side and one on the other side. But um, it's better to have the steering. It's better to have the steering in this, at this angle so you can get a tool in there a little bit easier and undo those those bolts so i've already undone loosened them and that's a t30 torque as i mentioned the actual um, screw will remain in there and i've already undone the other side as well so it'll be easier for you to turn this and locate the other hole which is just there And obviously um, you can undo the screw as well and uh, once you've done that you want to get your steering more or less in a straight position and right so we get the steering in a straight position um, and then now I'm going to disconnect the battery terminal the negative side and um, then we can start removing these bits but uh, also when we uh, remove the uh, battery terminal you want to leave it for a little while to um, for the, the whole system to discharge right so here's my battery uh, to get access to the battery I had to just take this out this little thing here holds your pollen filter in place and it's just clipped on in here so you open the clips and you take it out and then we have our negative side here you need a 10 mil to do that and then we can attempt to loosen this which might be a little bit hard I'm just gonna use this yeah see it helps me to take this out hopefully I think it is okay now it's out so I'm gonna leave it for about 10 or 15 minutes and then we can tackle the airbag. By the way, um, even though I'm leaving the battery disconnected for 15 minutes or so, um, some people will say leave it out for three to four hours or even longer. So even a day. So it's up to you. Um, obviously you do whatever you do here at your own risk. 
but um, yeah, perhaps the longer you leave it, the more secure or uh, the more sure you will be that uh, there's no any electricity left on the airbag to deploy. Um, so now, now we can take the airbag out here and uh, we're just gonna have a look at the connectors in here. Let's have a look at the connectors in there. Okay, so to remove these three bits here, these three connectors, um, first we need to open this little orange contact um, clip here. That little clip, we can just uh, pull it up, like so. And then with this um, gray bit here, you can lock that bit there so it doesn't go back in so once you've got that up and you got it locked in you could uh, you need to take this connection out so I'm just using this to help myself pry it out and from this end as well and that should come out um, and then we're gonna do the same for the other side here so pull the orange bit up and sort of uh, lock it into place with this there we are and then we can just again take that out And this one here, also, that shouldn't be too difficult. This one, we just basically pull it out. It's not really, it uh, doesn't really have a clip or so. <laughs> now that's uh, falling down as soon as I disconnected that. So be aware and be careful not to drop it uh, like I just did. So um, anyway, airbag is out. <coughs> Put it to one side if it's the first time you're doing something like this um, obviously just take your time be careful don't rush there's no need to rush and uh, then we need to remove this center bolt here which uses one of these uh, size this is like an allen allen type of key size 10 right now we need to open this um, it might be a little bit hard so i'm gonna try my best to hold it and open it at the same time so as i was saying um it can be quite hard so um you might need to get someone to help you to hold the steering if you can't do it yourself. I'm gonna give it a go, but <laughs> hopefully I can.
Right, I actually had to put a bar in between here and here to hold the steering to get this open and uh, that was so tight in there that I can even see the the bolt I think was about to get broken it was about to be broken because it was I never really had one as tight as that so I am not sure if somebody you can see the bolt was beginning to open itself on the corners there Maybe a little bit difficult to see you can just see the amount of force I had to apply it was actually kind of bending the, the bolt itself a little bit crazy really Right, before I fully take it out, I'm just going to make sure this is loose. And now I'm going to take it out. And uh, uh, this might, may have been out before actually, because I can see it's been marked. So maybe that's why it was so tight. Somebody has uh, clearly tightened it quite a lot. And also, there is there is a, a spline here that is larger than the other splines. There's lots of little splines here, but the one that's marked here um, is actually a big gap in there. And that needs to line up with the notch that you may find on your steering. You can't quite see it on this one, or maybe you can see the top one. There is a little notch here at the top, which you can't really see, but this is the notch I'm talking about. The same, the same kind of notch will be here, down here, and that usually matches with the large section here. Uh, because you want to make sure you get the, the steering here back in the same position. So if you haven't got these notches, these marks, uh, you could also put some paint like somebody did in this car. And then you can go ahead and remove your steering. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the steering. Just pass the wires through that hole. Take your time, don't damage anything. Get the steering out of the way. And um, now we have this section here. Now I can see this also has been marked just there. So to make sure this goes back in the same position. Um, the, the thing is, um, this clock spring here, um, if you turn it by mistake, um, obviously if it's like this, you can't fit it back. Um, it has to be this way. However, if for some reason, by mistake, you turn it, say, that much, the problem is that this will fit, that lines up, everything is good. However, because you're one turn to the left in this case um, when you turn the car to the left um, the ribbon inside of this will break because there won't be enough ribbon for that left turn so that's why it's important not to have not to do a full turn of this thing it needs to stay in one place um, it, it doesn't matter obviously if it moves a little bit whatever as long as you fit it as long as you don't do a full turn and fit it the wrong turn round <laughs> if that makes sense so anyway with that said um, we're gonna remove there is a screw there is a Torx screw um, somewhere here this 
which we want to remove and also we want to remove the little torx screws in here which i think they are t10s okay so i've got a t25 here and uh, if we put it into that hole there we can take out the screw the torx screw that's in there you really need quite skinny tools for this okay that is kind of loosened So maybe the screw that remains in there, not sure. And then we have these three that we want to undo as well. I've already sort of loosened them. Okay, now now we need to remove this uh, clock spring here. Um, it's a bit of a pain in the ass to remove it. Um, you really need to, maybe you need someone to help you as well. Uh, if you get like a flathead screwdriver and carefully put it behind this clock spring and also another one maybe at the top and you pry a little bit um and then someone if there's somebody that can help you can push the clips that are inside of here let me get the light on okay while somebody's um gently prying this from this from the back here and maybe one on the side here um inside of there there are four clips that you want to sort of push open so there's one there hard to see i'm afraid but there's one there there's the other two at the bottom so I'm talking about um, these things here, that one there, and you want to pry them open, and the one at the top there, and the one there. So what I'll do is, I've already, I wish I had filmed this, but uh, I got into it and it, and I removed it, but it, it kind of jumped out a little bit because it's under pressure, um, and also because if you get, like I said, if you get uh, somebody to help you, then it'll be a lot easier. So hold it like this and take it out straight because you're actually taking that out as well. And, uh, and like I said, keep this in one position. You don't want it to, to turn. So the clips you, we are pushing are these ones here. This one two three and four you basically from the front you're pushing them open like so you're trying to open them a little bit because those four are, are holding like this behind this thing they are actually holding like that so it's a bit hard to pull it out but you want to carefully put it out because you have that little thing as well and this is your uh, clock spring that sometimes breaks inside and it causes an airbag, by the way. So you could replace that. Well, this this is everything that we, you would have to do to replace that thing as well. And now we are here. We could technically with the screw we remove down here. All of this should come out in one piece so I can see this the screw has remained there which is a good thing <laughs> don't want it out 
But having said that, we have to, um, we need to take this section out so we can actually change. We can actually change this part. So, um, I don't know if there's any, let's take that out. And uh, maybe we can pull. There might be a screw behind here. Okay, there is a, a couple of torques, really small ones. So, a T10. Actually, they're not torques, they are actually Allen keys. No, actually, uh, they are torques. So, two T10s there. We can undo this. And there is actually three of them. Having said, said all of that. The other one on the side. And these are actually quite loose, <laughs> to be honest. So, if you got this far, well done. Um, now we have okay. Um, there's nothing else holding this piece onto onto here so you can use maybe a screwdriver and just um, pry open slowly and gently and it will come out like this that's the bolt that doesn't come out so don't lose that because this is the piece that we are replacing but um, we have the steering wheel control here this is to adjust the steering wheel electrically um, so we need to remove that and put it in the other in the other one because it doesn't have one so I'll just loosen that there and that's it that's the faulty part The new part so from this point on we just refit everything back on so um, I may just do the the process of repeating everything and uh, not saying not saying much this is supposed to go oh no, this way around <laughs> um, so that way we just uh, get on with the job here
this bolt needs to go into the into this thing here. So I'm just gonna actually. This side here, this this um, three, four, five, six pins here have to go in in these holes here. Alright guys, so I have a slight problem here. I have a slight problem uh, because the new um, stalk I have in this part here is got three, four, five, six pins. And uh, on the old one, that doesn't work. There is only three, four, five, <laughs> which means I can't. That's why it's not. Um, I was wondering why it's not fitting in here, but there is only five holes on this connection. So that means I need to. I need to return this part and get another one. Um, these are the little things that sometimes we really need to be careful with. Uh, if if there is a year difference in the in the car or so, um, sometimes this happens, and then the parts don't match. Even though these are listed for a W two zero nine between two thousand and three and two thousand and ten, whatever, it's not the same part. So, back to square one. I have to order another one and uh, send this one back, but uh, I think it goes without saying. Refitting of everything is basically reversal of removal, which I'm gonna have to do because I'm gonna have to refit everything back on, because otherwise I can't drive the car. <laughs> so that is a bit of a bugger really. So I wanted to get this done today, but never mind, it's not gonna happen today. So as I was saying before, I may just uh, get on with it and uh, don't do much talking here because we all know how this goes back. And while I'm here, I may apply a little bit of WD-40, see if that helps a little bit while I have to use this. So you may want to add some uh, Loctite, the liquid on this bolt, this uh, kind of stuff here. If you manage to do it, um, your job without any issues, um, you could apply some Loctite and then obviously you're going to need to close that. And also you may need to torque this. I don't really know the torque setting right now. But uh, 
I will try to find out for the next because I need to open all of these again since I got the wrong, the wrong part. Um, usually the torque setting for this is quite strong, something like a hundred newton meters or so. Um, I'll try to look it up and hopefully put it on this video. But uh, in my case, I won't be torquing this up today because I have a um, because I need to open it again and besides I'll probably need the help of my friend to hold the steering while I talk that so anyway um, continuing from here this obviously is still not working can go ahead and plug this back in so these are color coded green goes with green and yellow goes with yellow Okay, time to reconnect the battery and I'm not sure if there will be any airbag lights on, it could be, but um, we might need some software to delete any phone calls. Okay, it's a bit loud. There is life. It has running. And uh, there, is, there isn't actually any warning lights here. So um, we don't really need the OBD as such, but um, it could be that some, um, by disconnecting these things, uh, some faults may have been triggered uh, so you could always use uh, the OBD to check and to delete any fault codes that might be in there just check the, the horn as well um, volume controls just make sure things are working uh, what is going on here oh the radio is all reset Right, so um, anyway, having done this, uh, obviously I didn't have a successful outcome here because I've got the wrong bit, unfortunately, so I need to get the correct bit. Um, but um, that's pretty much the process. If you need to replace either your clock spring or any of these indicator stalk, speed limiter, um, or even the, the little switch for the adjusting the steering. So in any case, I hope this video helps. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. So thank you for watching.